Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for another day. Thank you, God, for another good day, wonderful day. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord, our God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, we are on. We are on. We are on. We are on. We are waiting for you guys. Come on. Come on. on. Share. Share. Begin to share the page with your friends, your contacts. Yes. Call your loved ones right now that we are on. We are online right now. Amen. Begin to share the page. Begin to share the page. Begin to share the page. Inform your contact. Inform the brethren to come on live right now because we are about to start. Amen. That's this another great and wonderful day the Lord our God has prepared for us to have fellowship with him. Hallelujah. And to be blessed. Our coming together unto him. Online tonight shall not be in vain. Amen. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. So please begin to share the page. Invite your contacts. Invite your contacts. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, I see Michael right now. Yes, you are welcome online. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I can see, I can see some people here. Yes, I want, yes, share the page with your loved ones, your contacts, please. Do that, do that, do that, do that, do that. Yes, that is, uh, yeah, that's right, that's Michael, that's uh, Joe, yes. Please share the page, we're about to start. I believe God has great and mighty things for us tonight. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, let us pray. Let us pray. Father in heaven, eternal rock of ages, Jehovah, most high God, the higher than the highest, the mightier than the mightiest, the great physician, the one who created everything, the one who heals, who delivers, yeah, the one who brings the counsel of the devils and their agents to naught, the one who makes their devices of non effect. Father, in your presence we have come yes even online and lord wherever your children are right now your presence is there because lord your presence is everywhere you sit upon the circle of the earth yes you are the governor of all nations all nations because lord you rule in the kingdom of men and so we thank you mighty god for this great and wonderful time in your presence because we know according to your word that are coming here tonight shall not be in vain so speak to us Lord, as we sit at your feet tonight, Lord, we pray that as many as have challenges, may you touch them, may you visit them in those areas where they have challenges. May you bring those challenges to an end because you are the solution to every problem. You are the answer to every question. Cause your face to shine upon your church tonight. Cause your face to shine upon your children tonight. Let nobody, oh God, connected to this meeting tonight, yet finish and at the end of the day, heaven is going to be ashamed. But Lord, let them rather have reason to glorify your name be more. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are the good and the great and mighty God. Speak through me, I yield myself to you. For Lord, I say, I confess before you, without you I can do nothing. I really have no word of my own. Therefore, speak through me. Yes, Lord, and honor your word in my mouth tonight, Lord. Father, we say thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory for rebuking Satan over the internet rebuking satan and his setup and his agents over any form yes of activity they want to carry out against your job father will say rebuke the devils and frustrate them in the mighty name of jesus christ we cover everyone with the blood of jesus we cover everywhere your children are right now with the blood of your son thank you father 
Bless serve your holy and mighty name in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So welcome you again to another great and wonderful session in God's presence. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue with the same subject. We, we, of course, this is repeat of this uh, 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 topic, this subject. You know, some time ago, sometime last year, we, we considered good health, divine healing, you know, and we saw various areas, you know, like medication, like food and all those stuff. Amen. Now, but last week we began to see again, you know, the place of our faith, you know, in the area of good health and divine healing, particularly in these challenging times, in the challenging times, the challenging times. This COVID virus, you know, coronavirus thing, you know, it's a big challenge. Some people don't believe it is real, but well, whether they believe it or not, it is real. They just like some people don't believe there is God. Whether they believe it or not, God is there. Some don't believe there is Satan. So whether they believe it or not, Satan is there. You know, so we need to properly, we need to properly advise ourselves, have the proper knowledge, the right knowledge, so that we're able to operate our faith based on true knowledge, not on ignorance or foolishness or presumption assumptions. Hallelujah. So last week precisely, last week precisely, we saw that for, uh, for us to enjoy sound health, which is, which of course is the will of God. Sound health is the will of God. Divine health is the will of God. Hallelujah. We say sound health is the will of God. For us to enjoy sound health, we must exercise our faith in God and in his promises concerning good health. We must, and I repeat, we must exercise our faith in God. Amen. Exercise our faith in God, not in any man, but in God and in his word concerning those promises. Okay? Those promises concerning good health. Yeah, concerning divine healing. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, but in addition to the faith that we are exercising, you know, in addition to that, we should also take the necessary, you know, the necessary, what we call necessary precautions, health precautions, health precautions, health precautions, take the necessary health precautions in order not to be found tempting the Lord for nothing. You know, it's like, you know, this is bad and you don't believe that, oh, it doesn't matter because I'm a child of God, even if I do it, nothing will happen to me. No, we don't do that. And you are not encouraged to do that. Hallelujah. You are not encouraged to do that. Don't do that at all. Hallelujah. You cannot act foolish or in foolishness or in ignorance and expect God to back you up. God does not back up foolishness. God does not back up ignorance. In fact, God said that his people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what the word of God says. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge, for lack of knowledge. And again, he said, I said, the just, the just, the righteous, they are delivered through knowledge. They are delivered through knowledge. You are, deliverance is not only about, you know, delivering, the deliverance from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, but deliverance from the powers of darkness, deliverance from sickness, deliverance from problems, troubles, you know. He says, so the just, true knowledge shall be delivered, shall be healed. The just, true knowledge shall be healed. So when they just operate in foolishness or in ignorance, of course, they just, even though righteous, you know, we suffer it. And those are the kind of things that some people see, they don't understand. People will ask questions. you find somebody who to you is a committed child of God, a committed Christian, and something happens to him. You don't know which area of God's world, you know, that he's not exercising faith in. But we just conclude, oh, why did this thing happen to this person? You know, people have different beliefs in different areas of God's world. Some have very strong faith when it comes to prosperity. But when it comes to healing, you know, they doubt God. You know, so, but God wants us to believe the whole counsel of God. The whole can in every area of our life. In every area. That is why the scripture says well, we should be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom, in all wisdom, and then spiritual understanding. We should not lack in any area, 
you know, of life as relates to the word of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So foolishness is out of the way. Ignorance is out of the way. So like I said, you know, faith is not foolishness. And in our walk with God, you don't walk, you don't say operating by faith and then you are walking in ignorance or, or you deny the existence of something that is a fact. Faith does not deny the existence of something that is a fact. Just like I said, you know, you can't say, oh, because I believe God, Satan is not there, Satan is not real. It's a fact. Satan is real. Satan exists. You know, there are problems. You know, problems are there. You know, but what faith, listen to this, listen to this, because when you operate in such realm of denying the fact, the fact of something that, what I say, the existence, the existence of something that is a fact, what that we lead to is that it will either lead you to harm or destruction. Destruction or harm. But God does not want to be hurt. God doesn't want you to be destroyed. You know? So, for example, like I said, you cannot deny the existence of Satan or the voice of darkness. Faith says the Lord is greater and mightier than Satan and all the voice of darkness and their work. That's what faith says. Faith doesn't say they, they don't exist. <laughs> you know, like some people say, ah, nothing like witchcraft. Well, no problem. No problem. <laughs> you know, people can say anything. You know, I mean, everybody is entitled to his own opinion or whatever they want to say. But the truth remains the truth. Okay? So, having said that, that faith, we only say the Lord is greater than the problem. The faith does not deny the existence of the problem, but it says God is greater than the problem and God is able to do or handle the problem for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, today, like I said, some people are still operating. Listen, today as we speak, some people are still, you know, ignorantly denying the existence of the coronavirus. Today, there are crimes. I'm not talking about unbelievers. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about unbelievers. Amen. I'm not talking about people who don't believe God's word. I'm talking about people who are Christians. Today, a lot of Christians still say they don't believe there is something like coronavirus. And because of that, they throw cautions to the wind. Because of that, they just live carelessly. The Lord live carelessly. They don't observe any of the, of the necessary COVID protocols as demanded. But you know what? Thank you, Jesus. You know what? The result of their attitude is that more people are being unconsciously and ignorantly spreading the virus. People are unconsciously, even these people who say they don't believe it, some of them, some of them, some of them, they have the virus in them. Some of them, they have certain symptoms which they say, well, maybe it is malaria or it is something else. Or it is normal pain. <laughs> First of all, there's no pain that is normal. Okay. So, unconsciously, unconsciously and ignorantly, some people go around spreading this same virus to other people. To other people, infecting people with the virus which they say does not exist. And unfortunately, the result is that a lot of people are also dying ignorantly. People that should not die, they are dying. Because faith, this subject of faith or this issue of faith is actually a personal thing. It's actually a personal thing. But don't say because you're operating in faith, then put other people's life in harm's way. Don't jeopardize other people's life because of your faith. If you have faith, have it to yourself. When you're in an environment you know is be hurtful and harmful to other people, not only be careful about how to protect yourself, but be, be concerned about other people's lives. And that again is love. Love, love is not selfish. So even if you don't believe coronavirus is real, but please, for the sake of other people, 
protect where observing the necessary protocol where the face mask do whatever is supposed to be do to be done when you are in a public place or when you are engaging yourself in discussion with other people. You don't believe the person that you are discussing with or the people you are in the midst of them may not have the kind of faith that you have. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what am I saying? You should not knowingly, okay, you should not knowingly drink a poison, drink a, any poison, because the law says that if we drink any poison or eat any deadly thing, they shall not hurt us. Don't knowingly, you know this is poison, don't drink it. If you say you are operating it, grand, you say it doesn't exist. Listen to me. Somebody said this, this is poison. If they tell you there is this food is poisonous, and you say, ah, it's a, it's a lie. It's not poisonous. I drink it. Well, if you drink it, whatever you, whatever happens to you next, I mean, you blame yourself. You have been forewarned. Nobody will see a poisonous sub substance and then ingest it and say, well, I, I want to prove something to somebody that I can drink poison, I can eat anything, nothing can harm me. If they tell you, don't do it. But if you don't know, that's where the promise of God will cover you. If you don't know, okay, if you don't know, you are not aware, and then somebody poisons a food or there's poison in the food, well, if you eat it, God will either make sure that the poison doesn't affect you, or even if the poison in this food or the drink seem to affect you, God will still deliver you out of it. God will deliver you out of it. But to consciously know that this thing is poisonous, and you say that we drink it and nothing will happen, something will happen. Something will happen, which will not be nice, which will not be palatable, which will not be good for you. So you should not, as a child of God, knowingly drink a poison because the word of God says that if you drink any poison or eat any lead thing, they shall not hurt you. Real faith, listen to me, real faith does not deny the fact of any problem. Real faith does not deny the fact, the existence of any problem. You know, you are saying the problem, faith does that, that it's not there, it's not, I'm not, it's not there. But what real faith will do is that in the face of that fact, Faith will see God in the midst of that storm. Faith sees God in the midst of that problem. And faith will confess that the Lord God that is in me is greater and bigger than this problem. Faith says, though there may be mountains and giants on the way, but through God or by the grace of God, we shall have the victory. We have the victory. That's what true faith will say. Faith will not say, oh, I'm not seeing any mountain. There is no, no, yeah. Though there are mountains, there are giants on the way. But by the grace of God, we shall overcome them. Hallelujah. That is what faith does. So faith is not foolish to say, well, there is no mountain. Well, there is no this thing. Faith does not boast in himself. Faith makes a boast in the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord, the Lord assures us. The Lord, the Lord assures us that in the world we shall have tribulation. So you see, the Lord himself says in the world we shall have tribulations and trials and distresses and frustrations but in the midst of them all, we should not be daunted. We should not be intimidated. But we should take courage. We should be confident and be of good cheer because he has overcome and deprived the world of his power to harm us. Of course, this is amplified of John 16, verse 33. John 16, 33. He said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence in the world in the world you have what tribulations and trials and distresses and frustration but be of good cheer take courage 
Be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you. I have conquered it for you. So the Lord didn't say, listen, I overcome, but there is no problem again. There is no uh, temptation. There will no trial. There will not in anything like that. No, but you didn't say that. The Lord who created the Lord, the Lord <laughs> who is the Almighty God, said these things will be there. But he has overcome them for us. So our faith must be in his power. Our faith must be in him, in his promise, in his word. Not in ourselves. In our, walk with, in our walk with God, child of God, we should always allow our conscience in this, in, 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 because of this, we should allow our conscience to guide us. You know, we should allow our conscience to guide us so that we don't make shipwreck of our faith as a child of God. Because when you operate in a presumption, in assumption, you know, thinking it's not there, oh, my faith is big and all those ones. Well, there are certain things, maybe, in fact, first of all, there is nothing God cannot do. But for, don't forget that faith has levels. Faith has levels. Faith has degrees. It has degrees. There's small faith, there's little faith, there's great faith, there's strong faith. Depending on your level of faith, depending on your amount of faith. But then you should be able to know that is why you need your conscience. You need your conscience. You need your conscience so that you'll be able to know what your faith can handle. Your faith can handle. Hallelujah. You know what your faith can handle. So that you don't say, well, I can, you know, do this. And then you enter there and then you say, it's a different ball game. And then the end of JC, because one of the things I know that is very discouraging for people is that when you release your faith and maybe the first time your faith didn't get anything done, second time didn't get anything done, third time didn't get anything done, your faith is not giving you the fruits or the dividends you know of your work with god it, it, it can be discouraging it can be discouraging those are the kind of things that will make somebody feel that well it doesn't work the word of god doesn't work those are the kind of things that will make somebody feel, i mean i was there i've been a christian this is the done to work god is awesome faith works the word of god works Hallelujah. <laughs> and nobody can tell me that it does not work because I've tasted the word of God. I'm still tasting the word of God. And I sang the word of God. It works. God is God works. God is good. God is faithful to his promise. God honors his word. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So allow your conscience to guide you. Allow your conscience to guide you. So that you don't exercise faith. You know, beyond that particular level of faith that you have in a particular thing, I mean in God, that you're exercising faith in a particular issue, you know, allow your conscience to guide you. But don't forget, we are concentrating on this issue of good health and divine healing. And particularly in this season of COVID pandemic, you know, because as I speak with you, you know, last week, we, there are people that are known to us, I know that have gone to be with the Lord or have died. You know, there are people who have died, people that we know, you know, of COVID. Not that they just died of, they didn't die of accidents. They died of COVID. Do you, you understand that? So we are saying this thing to, in order to advise or to warn us, you know, to forearm us, you know, so that we don't, you know, we don't throw caution to the wind and then get infected or we become carriers of this and are spreading it unknowingly just because we, we think that it does not exist. You know, it's not about our thoughts now, it's about what is real. It's not about our opinion now, it's about what is real. Amen. God does not want us to die. God does not want us to die prematurely. Amen. Jesus came to die that woman have life. You know, it is the will of God that we, 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 we prosper and be in health. Amen. Even as our soul prospers, that is the will of God for us. So let us not put ourselves in a ham, ham's way and then cause problems for ourselves. And then we give impression to unbelievers around us 
that oh they, they serve God or what, where is that God? Why didn't God heal him? Why didn't God set him free? Why didn't God save him? You understand my point? Now, First Timothy chapter one verses eighteen and nineteen, he said, "This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went on before thee, that thou mightest by them war a good warfare, a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, holding faith." Holding faith and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. When you put your conscience away and you are just walking by faith, the tendency is we're going to make a shipwreck. So your faith should go together with your word with good conscience. Good conscience. Maintain a tender conscience. Maintain a tender conscience. Hallelujah. So let your conscience, you know, help you. And determine, you know, the decisions you make, particularly in your walk of faith. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we should not walk in presumption and assumptions, okay, because our faith must be based on true knowledge. It's not assuming. Don't assume. Don't presume. <laughs> yeah? Have good understanding, okay? Have good understanding. Don't release faith in what is not real. Don't release your faith, you know, because the scriptures for example says he said he said he said he said he says in John in John said this is the confidence we have in him that if we pray according to his will, according to his will, he hears us. Now, if you are praying, asking God for something, either to do something for you, solve a problem for you, or give something to you, that thing you are asking for must be in line with God's will. Hallelujah. So you must know what the will of God is. Amen. Before you pray, before you release your faith. If you don't know what the will of God is in that area, if you release your faith, tendency is that you are going to have a shipwreck. But I pray that your faith should be so that will be delivering to you whatever you ask the Lord to do for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. That being said, we are going to see the place of medication. You know, in our quest to see, to, I mean, to stay healthy or get healed, you know, if we get tempted to be sick. You know, I see a lot of people, some people for that matter, who just believe that, well, it's not a bad thing. That is where every one of us should desire to be. That we just live in divine health. Sickness should not even touch us. You know, we should be full of so, we should be so full of the power of God. That any sickness, virus, or bacteria, or spirit comes to touch us, should just die. <laughs> Amen. That should be our desire. It's the best place to be. Okay? That's the best place to be. That we should not get sick at all. Why? Because by faith, the power of God, the life of God, you know, has saturated our body, our organs, our flesh. In a similar point. So, we become so divinely immune immune so that when these sicknesses viral bacteria they come to us they will have no inf effect they will have no influence over our lives but until that time until that time until that time until such a time when your faith is able to divinely or keep you in divine health or shield you from satanic or bacterial or fungi attack or whatever until such a time child of god when you or if you are tempted to be sick, if you are tempted to be sick or to be ill, nothing stops you from going for medication. Go take, go consult with medical doctor, practitioner, whatever. Let them prescribe medicines for you that can get you healed so that you can be strong and live your normal life. Go about your duties without lying down at home sick and complaining. Oh, I wanted to do, I can't do it because I'm sick. That is not the will of God. Hallelujah. So medication is not a sin. Medication is not a sin. But whether you are taking medication or you don't take medication, what is important is that you must always stand on God's word. He said be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Medication or no medication, we should be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might to keep you alive, to keep you healed, to keep you in divine health, to heal you when you are tempted to be sick. 
God is, God is true. God is faithful to his word. God is a confirmer of his promises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God is not against medication. God is not against us seeking medical attention or using medicine to heal, to get healed when we are sick or if we are sick. For example, look at this. Luke 5, 31, Jesus answering said unto them, they that are whole need not a physician. Yes, if you are whole, you are not sick. You don't need to go for medication. You don't need to go consult a, a medical practitioner. But they that are sick, so what he's saying in a nutshell is that if you are sick, it is not a sin to go for a doctor, to go seek a medical attention of a medical doctor. That's exactly what he had just said. They that are whole, those that are well, they don't need a physician. But if you are sick, for crying out loud, don't sit at home when you know your faith cannot deliver that healing. Don't sit at home and then be complaining and then looking for people to come and say sorry to you or visit you and all those stuff. Just call for medical attention. Let them attend to you so that you can be well. So that you can begin to live your normal life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Child of God, if not for medical doctors, okay, if not for medical doctors, I tell you that a lot of people would have, a lot of people would have been dead. A lot of people would be dead by now. But because they consulted with medical doctors, we were able to get treatment. They go to get treated, you know, they got well. They got well. They got well. So we thank God for medical doctors. We thank God for medical science. We thank God for them. It's not a sin. Amen. It's not a sin. Particularly in this time, difficult, challenging times that we are in all over, all over the world. Okay. You know that there have been these stories about vaccine and no vaccine, you know, and all those stuff. <laughs> Let me just tell you, this is my own faith. Every man has his own faith. Okay. This vaccine, this vaccine, personally, you Personally, I'm not I'm not telling you to take or not to take, but personally, I'm going to take vaccine. I will take the vaccine when it gets to us, or when we have opportunity, I will take. There's no point deceiving myself. There's no point. People all around us, a lot of people are carrying this virus, particularly children. Children are not children are not affected the way adults are affected. You understand that? And if you're somebody who likes to play with children, then better get yourself vaccinated. Because you can't, you can't say, I, I love to play with children, you know, and then you expose yourself to the vaccine, I mean, to the, the, the virus in a little child. The little child, with, 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 with the, the virus will be in the little child. The, the little child may not die, may not be affected the way an adult be affected, then the child transfers it to you, the adult. And then you begin to have health challenges and problems. And if care is not taken, also you suffer it and die. And then you, who do you blame at that time? No, who do you blame at that time? No, who do you blame at that time? So let us advise and walk according to knowledge. Let's walk according to knowledge. Let's not walk in foolishness. All this foolishness, all these things people have been talking about. Who has spoken against vaccine personally? If it has been proven that the vaccine will take somebody to help, I will not take. <laughs> but it has not been proven. <laughs> you understand my point? All these social media fake news and the, all there's too many things, but it has not been proven that the vaccine will take somebody to help. Or it has the mark of the beast. Uh, if it is proven that it has the mark of the beast, I will not take. But it has not been proven. Okay? So anything that will keep me well, if my fake are not they keep me keep this thing away from me i will take that thing as long as it has nothing to do with satan hallelujah this is my own conviction i just share to you my faith hallelujah <laughs> amen that doesn't mean i don't have faith <laughs> thank you jesus we give you praise we give you glory lord hallelujah child of god it is really not necessary 
you know, to boast that you don't take medicines when you are uh, to be healed when you are sick. You know, some people don't form a habit, oh, you know, like, ah, I don't take medication, you know, when I'm sick, you know. Well, it is good. Thank God for you. I want to be like you. I want to be like you. I want my faith to rise up to that level where there will be no need at all. I'm not saying that I need daily your medication. You know, I exercise my faith. There are times I get tempted to have paint on the head and I say, get out, you go. And they go, it goes. There are times, you know, but there are times also that this thing will just come and you say, go. And the next moment you are still feeling the pain, but you don't want that pain at that time. Listen to me. Go for something that will get you healed. As long as it will not be in sin. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Help yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. God will honor your faith. Amen. L -l Listen to this. The scripture says that if you have faith, have it to yourself. Romans 14, 22. Has thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in the thing which he allied. So if you have faith, please keep your faith to yourself. Allow those whose faith have not gotten to the level of your faith to also live their life exercising faith and still taking medication. Hallelujah. Amen. None of you are committing sin. You that is living without medication or uh, uh, use, use medication to get healed when you are tempted and the person who uses and also believe God, all of you are children of faith. You are children of Abraham. Hallelujah. We are all children of Abraham. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Like I said, in as much as your faith is strong enough to stop you from being falling sick, which is perfect and a thing to be desired by everyone, you should not be, you know, you will not be committing sin if for any reason you accompany that faith, okay, with medication. If need be, you accompany that faith with what? With medication. If what? If need be. If need be. If need be. Accompany with medication. You are not committing sin. Hallelujah. So you are not committing sin in this season if you want to protect yourself and say, okay, there's vaccination, let me go take vaccine, let me go and take the vaccine, you know, to protect myself against coronavirus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I will not want to mourn you. You know, I want to hear that you are alive somewhere, you know, you are alive and you are doing the word of God, you are doing the work of God, you know, everything is working well for you. That is the news I want to hear. I don't want to hear that, oh, this person I know is dead. I don't want to hear that. May God keep you alive. May God shield you from the arrows and manipulation of those devils and their agents are planning to kill you in Jesus' mighty name. You shall not die prematurely. Hallelujah. You shall live to testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. There's a lot of work for us to do here on earth. So you shall not abandon the work. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The truth is that you don't have to condemn yourself as a Christian for using medication. Don't feel condemned. Don't let anybody condemn you. You know, see my point. You know, someone told me one day, you know, when we were during this time of uh, observing uh, the, uh, the COVID protocol, you know, uh, you make sure you don't shake people, you shake with elbow and all those stuff. Somebody stretched out hand to shake me. I said, no. You know what came out of the person's mind? I said, you don't have faith. I said, listen to me. Listen to me. Well, if you say I don't have faith, no problem. When you were leaving your house, did you lock your door? That's the question I asked. When you were leaving your home, did you lock your door? Why did you lock your door? Why didn't you open your door wide and let your faith watch over your property? Yeah? You will come back to come and tell us what happened the following day. Leave your house wide open. You have faith. Don't lock your doors. <laughs> Amen. Don't keep your doors wide open both day and night. In fact, travel and come back. If you still meet a pin in your house, then you'll know that you have acted in foolishness. <laughs> That's my point. So faith is not foolishness. You know? Observe it. They've told us. None of them tell you. Okay? Wash your hand. These things, you know, you don't know what you touch and you contact this virus. You can shake somebody, can you know, and I, I mean with some of us who are so who are so used to either touching face, touching eyes, scratching, uh, whatever. You understand my point? So why must I talk about this? shaking everybody, you know, on the road? Just because I want to be uh, socially uh, correct, yeah? I, I want to appear to be sociable to everybody. It, I can't play with my life, and I'm advising you don't play with your life. Don't jeopardize your life just because you, you, you want to operate on a faith that is not real faith. That is not the faith of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. So, what am I saying? <laughs> what I'm saying is that, you know, you don't condemn yourself. Don't condemn yourself as a child of God when you use medication. Okay? In the time of health challenges, as long as your faith is in God, medicines will help to deal with the symptoms of the sickness. Why the real healing is done by God? You know, the medical people, just, the motto says, you know, we care for the sick Why God heals. God is the one that heals. Hallelujah. God is the one that heals. As we say, like I was saying a few moments ago, some people have died, some people, are people that I know, people that we know, you know, that have died of COVID, you know, I mean, they died of COVID. Was it the will of God for them to die? Well, I don't know, but according to what from the scripture, I do not think that these people that I know that died, they, they, they should have been dead, okay? But they died. They died. That is not the will of God. For me or my understanding, it's not the will of God. So some people are dead already, you know? They died already. It's painful. It's, hot. it's, hot. it's hurting. It's hurting. So don't you, don't put yourself in a hands way. Please don't kill yourself because you're preaching faith. Faith is pretty low, but now protect yourself. Observe all the necessary health precautions so that you will live and not abandon some of the, the responsibility you have to somebody else. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Some people have also died prematurely because they depended solely on medical care without faith in God who heals. Now, what does that mean? There are people who die prematurely because they deny themselves early or no medical attention at all. That's what I've been talking about. They believe that they can get healed. Oh, they can't, they, I mean, they don't have a virus. So they waited until the virus are eating deep into their system. So it became too late by the time they are rushed. Because listen to me, a man that is seriously sick cannot even determine, cannot even say what the relatives will do. So don't leave yourself to the play. Don't leave yourself to the decision of your relatives who will say anything they like. Some of them even abandon you. They will not decide to either send you to a, 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 a traditional medical traditional or whatever they call the native doctor or they, in fact, whatever they, they take you to anywhere. It places against your choice because you can't speak, you are you are unconscious because you are sick. So don't live your life, don't hang your life on someone's on other people's uh, uh, decision or opinion. Now that you are alive and you can speak, you can take decision yourself, do what is necessary while you are still exercising faith. So don't wait until it is too late. To, act, to allow to, to seek or to seek medical attention. Don't wait until it's too late. Now, those are for some people who don't believe at all. Okay, we can don't take medication. I mean, they wait until too late and they die. There are also those, okay, who die prematurely because they depend solely on medical care without having faith in God. You know, there are people who are funny. They are Christians. I'm not telling you that. That your breaking faith does not mean that you should not see medication. And that you are a child of God. Don't depend on medication without God. Don't depend solely on medication without God. Of course, this is, supposed to, this is not supposed to be the life of a Christian. I mean, unbelievers who don't have faith. That should be there because they don't depend. But that's also tell you that, listen, people, you can go for medical, depend on, pay so much money on medication without having faith in God to heal you, the medication will not work. It's God that heals. So you, while you are going for medication, have faith in God. Okay? Have faith in God. There must be a balance so that we do not deny or deprive ourselves of the promise of God in this area of good health or divine healing, which is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. Now hear this, hear this. The Bible says faith without works is dead. We are all familiar with that. But I want to let you know that works 
without faith is also dead. <laughs> Works, that is, you are not taking medication, you are not doing all that, without faith is also dead. Because look at this, scripture say what? We are saved by the grace of God through faith, not of ourselves, not of works, lest any man to what should boast. He said we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So faith without works is dead, isn't it? You are saved by faith, you will produce good works. Hallelujah. So while you are doing good works, don't think that your good works will save you. You must exercise faith in God. Your good works will not save you, but you must do good works. Your faith must be in God. In fact, you are saved by, you are God's creature, God's creation. In Christ Jesus to produce good, to do what is good. So that exercising faith does not mean that you should, you, I mean, you, 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 should, you should not do that which is good. So live by faith. Go for medication if need be. If you are going for medication, don't say, well, my life is dependent on me. No. Sit, stand on faith. Sit, stand on your faith in God. Sit, stand on the word of God. Let God do what he wants to do. I mean, well, let's look at, look at this scripture. Look at this scripture. Look at this scripture. Paul said to Timothy, in second, uh, first Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, he said, drink no, drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and thy often infirmities, often infirmities. Timothy was a bishop. Timothy was a bishop. So bishop had often infirmities. And Paul, apostle, was telling Bishop Timothy to take little wine. A little wine for what? For that is often infirmities. Frequent, often means frequent sickness. Whether it's too much pain, I don't know. Whether I, whatever it is. But what he said, he said he should take no longer water. But should also take little wine for his often frequent sickness. For what? To heal him. You understand? To heal him. When, see, what, what we're saying is that when you are tempted and you are going through those, those pains, the medication is not the what heals you, but will help relieve you of those pains. It will help you relieve you of the symptoms of that sickness or disease or whatever. God is the one that will truly destroy the root of that thing, that virus. This we are calling virus. We are not seeing it, but the effect of the viral attack, the pains, the high, the, the fever, and all those things. Medication can deal with all those things, but it is God, Jehovah. That will heal you, destroy the spirit, the root, the virus in your body. Hallelujah. So depend on God, child of God. Depend on God. In this season, let your faith be strong in God. And if need be, when you have occasion to take medication, don't deprive yourself of that. Don't say, I have faith I cannot take. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But when we talk about medication, we're not talking about going to visit native doctors or taking medication that were prepared under demonic, uh, uh, what I call it, uh, inspirations. You know, in other words, satanic inspirations, satan inspired the, the person to, to prepare those drugs. Uh, we, we are not for those, we are not for such things. Don't go for satanic prepared medicines. Okay, all those medicines they prepare, you know, uh, the, uh, the carrying out of enchantment and the uh, incantations and the whatever uh, invocation. Don't go for all that. Don't go for all that. Go for orthodox medicine. Don't go for orthodox medicine. You are good, home and dry. Medicine that are scientifically proven. In fact, there are herbs. There are herbs 
okay, that have some medicinal values in them. You don't need to say a word to apply them or use them in order to be well or to be healed. You don't have to say seven, you don't have to plug them seven, them up, seven pieces or seven, or uh, make some, uh, uh, enchant them seven times, you know, before you use them. No. Those things, they are potent, they, start, they have medicinal values in them. There are certain leaves that have iodine effects that when you get in injured, okay, you, 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 you squeeze out the juice in those leaves, apply them on that fresh wound, and it dries up. You don't have to make any enchantment. You don't have to say any, you don't have to invoke any demon. It is God that created those things. It is God that put those things there. So God is not against such. God is not against such. And you will not be sinning if you take the one, you know, that is scientifically proven or that have this kind of medicinal value. But it will be a sin if you go pra, uh, 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 patronize those ones that are, you know, a, a satanic uh, prepared or demonic prepared or prepared on that demonic or satanic uh, influence. What we say that God allows the use of medicine, God allows the use of ointments or bands for healing. Look at Jeremiah 8, 21, 22. He said, for the heart of the daughter of my people are my heart. I am black. Astonishment are taking hold on me. Verse 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Praise the Lord. Jesus is the oil of the balm of Gilead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Are there no medical practitioners there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Because medication is supposed to help you recover health wise this is god speaking are there no medical practitioners that can attend to you so that your health can recover so child of god don't let anybody deceive you okay don't let anybody tell you you don't need to take vaccine yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to take medication when you are tempted, or we wait. if you are tempted to be sick, you don't need any of those things. You don't. If the person has faith not to take and the person is well, praise the Lord for that person. And if you also have faith to be well, I praise the Lord for you. I thank God for you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oil and wine use also as messes. Luke chapter 10, verse 33 to 35. He said, for the certain Samaritan as he journeyed, came where he was, okay, and when he saw him, that's a man that had been robbed, robbed by, by, by robbers. I was wounded. He had compassion on him, and he went to him, bound his wounds, bound up his wound, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave to them, and gave to them, to, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. But look at what he did first. First aid, first aid. He applied for aid. What was the first aid? Oil and wine on the fresh wounds. Oil and wine for the fresh wounds. That was first aid. What is it? It's medicine. It's medicine. Praise the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ also, when he was, you know, when he, when he healed a blind man, the scripture said he, 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 he got a mixture of his own spiritual and sand and, and you know, mixed them and applied on the, and on the eyes of the blind man. John chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. He said, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground, spat on the ground, and made clay of the spiritual. Okay, and he anointed, anointed. So the spiritual and the clay were anointing. Anointing is not only olive oil. <laughs> he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Came seeing. This was Jesus. Eh? Anointing somebody with the... Uh, 
uh, uh, spiritual mix with uh, sand. Hmm? What was that? Medicine. Medicine. So, child of God, please, I'm begging us. You don't need to die out of ignorance. And you don't need to die out of foolishness. You don't need to die prematurely out of presumption or in our assumption. Please, live your life to the fullest. Live your life to the fullest. The Lord has promised to give you long life. You will not die prematurely. So don't allow the enemy deceive you and cause you to, 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 to shortchange yourself because of ignorance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So again, child of God, it is good to listen to your word, to your conscience in all of this. Let your conscience direct you. If your conscience tells you don't take, med don't take medicine for this, don't take Believe God, because you also must exercise your faith. You must train your faith. It's not that every little thing you take medication. But if your conscience tells you, please take medication now, go and take. If your conscience says, don't take, just wait, you'll be healed. Stand on that. You'll be healed. Exercise your faith. The most important thing is that your faith must be in God and the promise of God that you should live in good health. Okay? That's what your faith should be in. Your faith should be in the fact that God has power to save you. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, so that, that, that yeah, we, we read that uh, First Timothy uh, uh, chapter 18, uh, 19. Now, so, but while it is important that we grow our faith in God's word in every area of our life, we should also not lose sight of the fact that what is most important for us is to be what is to be sound. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do on earth. Hallelujah. That is why I say, I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. You shall live and not die. Amen. May God keep you alive. May God sustain you. May God, may, 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 may God keep your spirit, soul, and body well. Amen. May the Lord destroy whatever is not of him in your life whatever is working against your peace your life your health the lord destroy them in the mighty name of jesus christ thank you jesus hallelujah thank you lord you cannot use your faith as an excuse not to do what's expected of you that's what i'm again i'm saying don't use your faith as an excuse don't say because i'm believing I'm, you are sick I and mean, you say i'm believing god to be healed and then somebody expects you to go and do something now you really to go for medication if you're under unemployment, listen to me. Doctor, your, your employer will ask you to go for medical attention, but it's your choice. If they give you sick leave or two days, and in two days you don't get healed, or they give you sick leave for three days or whatever, and you don't get healed, there's a time when, and they know you refuse to go for medical uh, attention. Uh, listen to me. When they get to their knowledge, they may even sack you. They will, tell, they will say you are not serious. In a similar point, they say you are not serious. They will sack you. So if you have faith, let that faith heal you so I can return back to work. So what we are saying is that don't use your faith as an excuse not to do what is expected of you. Don't use faith as an excuse. In a similar point, if you have faith and there's something for you to do, go for medical attention so that they can get healed and return back to work or be able to do the things you are supposed to do. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, brethren, I think we should have to stop here. We have to stop here. We have to stop here. What we have just said in a nutshell is that it's not a sin, okay, to seek medical attention, particularly in times like this. In times like this. It's not a sin. So don't let anybody deceive you and make you feel or condemn you and say, ah, you are, say you are a Christian, so you are good, you know, you are wearing masks. Why, why, why wear masks? Uh -uh, there is no corona, there is coronavirus. Please. There is coronavirus. There is a coronavirus. Don't let anybody, don't let anybody deceive you, okay, to make you expose yourself, you know, to danger, you know, and run away from short people. Any person who is coming around you with without face mask, 
okay, being careless and the person approaching you, tell the person stay there, stay at that, you know, in fact, give the person not even a two feet uh, social distance, tell the person to stay like two miles. <laughs> you want to talk with you. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's not be foolish. <laughs> COVID is real. You know, observe all the protocols. Do what you are supposed to do. God will do his own part. You get the point. But while you are doing all this, don't be afraid. The Lord Jesus Christ said, in the world, in this world, we will have distresses, we will have tribulations, we will have uh, what, uh, what against it. What again they say we, we are going to have. Okay? He said, in the world, you have tribulation, you have distresses, you have. Uh, uh, what again did he say is going to be there? You know, let's see that. Okay? Uh, frustrations, uh, frustrations. A lot more frustrated because of COVID. You know, more frustrated. He said they will have all those things. But listen, he said we should be of good cheers. He has overcome them for us. But that does not mean, okay, like I said, you should throw caution to the wind. He has overcome them for us. Yes, praise the name of the Lord. But we should observe and do the necessary things so that we don't expose ourselves unnecessarily. Hallelujah. Thank you. I believe somebody has been blessed tonight. I believe that you're not going to expose yourself and allow somebody who is carrying this thing. Because a lot of people are carrying them, you know. You know, people go to parties, people go to burial, you know, uh, funerals and all those stuff. You know, people go to, you know, different things. I mean, somebody wrote an article recently at the entrance of the place, everybody wear face mask, wash hands before you enter the hall, and then when people begin to eat, you know, you remove the face mask, you are not going to wear face mask and be eating. Then when people are eating, they remove the face mask, and then the waiter that is coming to serve you, you know, with your mouth open, you are going to ask, please, can I have some water? You are speaking with that mouth where there's coronavirus. <laughs> oh, my word. Yeah? Do you understand that? Yeah? And maybe the 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 the, the wait house is going to, to respond to you. We don't know all this and see. Let us observe what we need to observe while we are having faith in God. Let not just it doesn't exist. It exists. It exists. It exists. Do the necessary things. God will protect you. Okay. God will protect you. You will not die prematurely. God is greater than COVID. That is what I know. God is better than COVID. Mm -hmm. The fact is that a lot of people are not testing. They are not going for testing. Of course, I don't think uh, presently with the, with our government has the capacity to test a good number of people. But I tell you that if the government has the capacity to test a good number of people, you will be amazed. It's not fake. You are amazed at not report that will be testing positive. Hmm? The testing positive. But the people are well, they are going up and down. Like people who are not having the symptom, but they are they, they are sick. They have the virus inside of them. So let us do the necessary things. Okay? It is the will of God for us all to be well so that we can see each other, you know, and be healing up from each other. Amen. Somebody, like I said, God will keep you alive. You will not die prematurely by the grace of God. God will give you the wisdom to live, you know, and keep yourself safe, you know, and out of the harm's way. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. If you heard this message and then you have not given your life to Jesus, it's good you do so now. Because, <laughs> like I said, even if you are taking medication without faith in God or without being a child of God, the Bible tells us that healing is the children's bread. Healing children's bread. You don't have right to lay claim to God's promise without accepting Jesus Christ. So just ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life right now. Ask Jesus Christ to come and save you. Let him wash you with his blood. Tell the Lord that you believe he died because of you. He went to hell. God raised him up from the dead and he's alive. Yes. And then he can come into your life and save you. Then you can have a right to the children's bread, which is healing. The Bible says healing is children's bread. And if you also, you have been born again, okay, but your faith has been weak and then you have been living careless, tell God to deliver you from that spirit that is making you live careless, okay? Tell God to fill you with the spirit of wisdom so that you, you will not be operating and living in foolishness. Let God give you wisdom. 
Let God fill you with the spirit of wisdom and understanding. Amen, somebody. So, God begin to pray right now. Pray now. Pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. And if you are sick in your body, receive the bread of healing right now. If you have any of the symptoms, you know, even as you are taking your medication, tell God, Lord, I believe you are my healer. I receive healing for my body. I receive healing for my body. Lord Jesus, it is written, you took my infirmities. You took my symptoms. You took my COVID. You took my malaria. You took my whatever the pain. You know, you took them so that by your stress, I am healed. I am healed in my body. I have life in me because you died, Jesus, that I might live. And I shall live and not die. No, so pray, child of God, pray. Pray for yourself. Hallelujah. And my friend, you want to give your life to Christ, so just say this with me. Almighty God, I thank you for your word I've heard tonight. I believe that Jesus is your son who died for my sins, whom you raised up from the dead and kiss alive. Jesus, come into my life right now. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you for all you've done for me. I receive that bread of healing. Yes, that bread of healing, which belongs to the children of God. It is written as men have received you. You have given them power to become children of the living God. As I receive you today, I become a child of God and I'm entitled to, to the healing bread. I receive my portion. I receive my portion. I receive every promise yes that you have given to me i receive i lay hold upon them and i thank you father lord i thank you that today i'm not a child of god i belong to your household i'm nice Lord, the kingdom of heaven i have eternal life in me in jesus mighty name and i pray for everyone out there every one of you whatever you are going through right now may the lord god almighty deliver you from those challenges i pray that the lord visit you and show you his salvation I pray that the Lord will send help to you from heaven. I pray that the Lord dismantle every satanic arrangement and setup to undermine the will and the plan of God concerning your life. I pray that the Lord will shine his face upon you. I pray that the Lord will do what he has said because the Lord that God has said that darkness will cover the earth and grow darkness the people. But in the midst of it, darkness it will rise upon us. It will rise upon you. So may the glory of God come upon you. The Lord do for you what no man can do. The Lord do for you what you cannot do for yourself. The Lord show himself strong in your behalf. The Lord cause anything and everything working against you, whether from within you or outside of you, the Lord destroy them and give you great peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ said, in him we shall have peace. Therefore, receive that peace from God. Receive that peace on every era, in every area of your life. Receive that peace, that peace that comes from God. Receive peace. In a mighty, the Lord shine his face. The blood of Jesus speak for you. Every voice speaking against you. All of those who are saying you should die now. The Lord return their call back upon their head. Child of God, every appointment that Satan has made for you to die prematurely, that appointment is cancelled tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All which are here is that you are doing well. We shall not mourn you, you shall not mourn us, we shall not mourn anybody connected to this meeting, connected to this program, we shall not mourn anybody. Because the Lord of our God is the giver of life. Jesus is life we are living here on earth. And to him be all the glory and all the honor. Even as the Lord has given us the Holy Spirit to quicken our mortal body. May the Spirit of God quicken your flesh. I say the Holy Ghost quicken your mortal body. All your organs, the Lord quicken them. The Lord quicken them. The life of God swallow up every sickness, every virus, whether COVID or anything. The, the life of the Holy Ghost swallow them up so that the life of God will be your portion. I say you shall live and not die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Be well in your body. Be healed in your body. Be sound in your health. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer and honoring your word in the life of your children. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. So we come to the end of today's uh, meeting, and then I thank God for you, for your participation. You know, you will live and not die, so we, uh, I expect to see you again next Wednesday by the same time, 7 p.m. Nigerian time. Hallelujah. On Sunday, we have two services, 8.30 in the morning, you know, and then 10 o'clock, one and a half hour between each, one and a half hour each of the services. Of course, the reason we're all maintaining social distance, <laughs> hallelujah. And if you are coming to church, you live around it when you come in, please make sure you are well equipped, your face mask, ready to obey the usher, the God will direct you so that we maintain the 
the, 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 the protocol so that uh, we don't give room to the enemy. Hallelujah. God will keep us alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I thank God for your life and I look forward to seeing you you know, online on Wednesday next week or on Sunday online and then maybe uh, fiscal, uh, fiscally, you know, when you are praying. I mean, when we come to church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So thank God for tonight. The word of God will fulfill in your life. The word of God will become life. The word of God will become flesh in you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, well, that is the word of God for us today. Amen. I encourage you to give your offerings, sow your seed to the church. The church account number, you have it and it shall be posted there for you. You know, do your online transfer and if you're in the church environment, you can go and drop your offering. Amen. God will bless you for partnering with us in grace for now, so favor. Hallelujah. So until we meet again, until Sunday, which is the next time we are meeting, you know, remain blessed, keep safe, and stay rapturable. We don't know when he's coming, but may you not miss the rapture. God bless you and have a wonderful night rest. If you are somewhere else where it is there right now, good day to you, good afternoon, <laughs> or good morning anywhere. Hallelujah. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Amen.